Hey y'all, it's Gypsy. Well, tonight I'm going to be doing a book review on a book I mentioned in a video not long ago, and the book is Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty. Um, if you're not familiar with her channel already, uh, let me just go ahead and send you on over to her because I absolutely love her channel and I love her cause. I love what she's doing. Um, the channel is called Order of the Good Death. Uh, and she has a series on there called Ask a Mortician. And uh, I just, she's, she's basically trying to kill the taboos about death and dying that we seem to have here, especially in the United States. But it's kind of a Western European slash American thing. Um, I'm not going to go into all of it, but, well, it's a big part of her book. I will say that. Um, this book is so matter of fact. She is one of those people that has a knack for writing the way that she talks, and I just absolutely love that because it makes it so easy to read. It's like you're sitting there listening to her tell the story. Um, the book itself, um, it's not very long. Let me see. It's, God, it went so fast. It's like 240 pages, give or take a page or two. Um, I, I honestly think I'm going to go through the bibliography after reading this book. She's got a bibliography in the back. It's about two pages long. And it's like going to be my life's goal to go through this bibliography and read all of the stuff that she read in order to write this book, or at least that she refers to in this book, uh, because it's just fascinating. Um, the, the entire title is Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory. She is a mortician, and she started out um, as a crematory operator. And she basically just kind of shares with her, shares with you her story um, of her experiences in the death industry, basically. Um, you know, working in a crematory, dealing with funeral home funerals, um, you know, the different responses that different clients have had to death and dying. And it's just, it's a really fascinating book. And it seems like it would be morbid. And, you know, I've had people look at me like, what are you reading? And I'm like, no, seriously, like you have got to check this out. It is the coolest book. I've always been a big fan of cremation. This book did nothing to deter me from that. Um, it has opened my eyes to other alternatives that I didn't know. Like, for instance, I didn't know that there are no actual state laws in place that make you have to be buried in a coffin. Um, that is per the county or per the cemetery itself. There's no mandates uh, that you have to be buried that way. I didn't know that. I thought it was like you either got buried in a box or you, you know, a sealed box, which freaks me out, or you get cremated. Um, however, <clears throat> there are several alternatives, uh, which you can read about in her book. She also talks about just people's um, perspective and how different families deal with or dealt with the passing of their relatives. And it was really interesting, you know, to kind of read about some of the stories um, you know, some people, you know, she, which I didn't, I never really thought about this. Most people kind of die quietly. Um, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, you see on TV and things get sensationalized, like Dr. G, medical examiner and things like that. And, you know, it's like you forget it's not all blood and gore and train wrecks and car wrecks and, you know, dismembered bodies and things like that. However, interesting enough, in the crematory industry, um, you know, it turns out they have a lot of body parts that come in. People with severed limbs, for example, they cremate those. Didn't know that. I never really thought about what they did with them, honestly, until I started reading this. Um, and again, you know, I'm not a squeamish person when it comes to death and dying. The idea of dying doesn't really bother me that much. I see it as part of life. It's like, that's what you get for being born. You get to die. Um, but, you know, whenever... It, I was reading this book and of course I had it with me when I went to work and you know it kind of came up in conversations with people and I was really surprised at some of the reactions of my friends and how totally wigged out some of my friends are um, about the concept of death and dying. Uh, I guess in my family, the way that I was raised, I was never shielded from death. I've never shielded my children from it. Um, it's just always been kind of an accepted thing. Uh, my mother, you know, um, has a blood disease and so you know growing up she was in the hospital a lot and the um, concept of mortality came up a lot um, I've had situations in my own life where I've kind of faced my own mortality and I've come to terms with it you know uh, it's cool 
Um, that's why I live life moment to moment, because you never know, you know, it could just stop any time. Uh, and after reading this, I'm cool with it. You know, my family knows what my last wishes are. And that's something, too, uh, in reading this book is, you know, a lot of people avoid the topic of death and they don't want to think about it. But you really should, because you don't want things to just get thrown together or done in a way that maybe you really didn't want them done. You just never expressed it. Um, you know, of course, you'll be dead, so it really doesn't really matter. But you know, when you really think, I mean, it matters to me. I like the thought of knowing that my family's carrying out my last wishes and handling me the way I want to be handled. Um, you know, so anyway, I don't want to go off on a tangent. This isn't about me. This is about the book. This is an awesome, awesome book. I got this on Amazon. I actually pre-ordered this. I discovered her channel happens to have been like just weeks before the book came out. And so I was like, ah! So I jumped on and, and ordered it, um, but I very highly recommend this book. This is, um, you know, it's basically, it's like a memoir, and it is one of the quickest reads I think I've, I mean, and, and here's the irony, and I talked about this in the video that I brought it up in uh, when I just kind of mentioned it. I hadn't finished the book yet. Uh, I actually stalled reading the rest of the book, uh, which is kind of ironic because her whole book is about how we avoid the end. And we avoid thinking about the end, and so we tend to put off the whole subject. Um, and here I was, refusing to read the last 20 pages, because I didn't want the book to be over. <laughs> um, and in fact, after I loan it out to the people that I've promised I would let them read it, including my 14-year-old daughter, she really wants to read it. Um, and I'm going to let her, because there's, there's nothing in here that's not appropriate. I, I think she may use some words, but they're nothing she's never heard anyway, so I'm not going to sweat it. She's 14 years old. Um... But uh, this this book is one of those that you may you're gonna want to read again. And like I said, you know she's got this bibliography in the back that goes on for it's like a good solid two pages of bibliography. And I fully intend to um, you know start getting into that because I, I really want to I really want to read all this stuff. She's oh no it's more than what I thought it was. It's actually several pages pages and pages and pages. Um, of books that she and articles, I guess, that she read. So that'll keep you busy for a while. So if you want to, you know, read a little bit more of the macabre, um, you can just macabre yourself to death with the list that she has in the back of this book of awesome stuff to read after you finish reading this bit of awesomeness. So anyway, um, go get yourself a copy. Smoke gets in your eyes um, and other story, other lessons from the crematory by Caitlin Doty. Again, her YouTube channel, and I'll put it down below, is Order of the Good Death, um, and her series is called Ask a Mortician, and she also has a Facebook page, which I'll also link below, that you can go and follow her on Facebook. I'm totally following her, because if she does any book signings or anything in the Houston area, I'm all over it. I'm on it. Caitlin, do you hear me? Just saying. Houston, Texas. It's a fun place to visit. Anyway, you guys have a great evening, and blessed be.